Hey, ladies and gents, and welcome back. So before you guys go running off and just fast forwarding over to the actual shoe repair portion of this video, stick around for one quick second so I can give you a background story on this pair of Red Wing boots. Okay, so right out of the gates, a big thank you to Aaron from Minnesota for sending this pair of boots to us. Okay, so we get Iron Ranger boots sent to us all the time. But when I got an email from Aaron, it really caught my eye and I said, you've got to send these in to us because we want to do a video on this pair of uh, Red Wings. So this pair of Red Wings was actually sent to Aaron around 2007, I believe he said. It was actually a test pair or a prototype of a new pair of boots that Red Wing was wanting to uh, possibly put into production. Now, if you guys aren't aware, a lot of shoe companies will sometimes, if they have an idea or a concept, they will send a pair of those shoes or several pairs of those shoes or boots out to, to people to test, to give their opinions on it before they go and they start producing these on a mass scale. Well, that's what happened to this pair of boots. If you actually take a look at this pair of boots, these are some characteristics that, that kind of stick out. It is a red wing boot that actually has wing tips. And if you've noticed, most red wing Iron Rangers actually have cap toes. So the wing tip was very different on this. Also, instead of the uh, silver colored um, uh, speed laces and, or speed hooks, they had gold on this pair or brass, should I say. Also, uh, let me see what else. On the back portion of the boot, there is normally another pair of leather that kind of hooks around the back portion of the heel. And on this one, it doesn't do that. It's one piece of leather, but then it kind of has like a little triangular barb shape to it. That is also significant to this test pair. So it was really neat. I've never seen a test pair of boots come into our shop. And what we're gonna to do to these is just get them back to the original shape that they were in when they were sent to uh, Aaron. Uh, they were brown in color. We wanna get the brown back as much as possible. Um, and then we just wanna put these back to the exact state that this test pair looked like when they were sent to him about 15 years ago. So anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get out to the shop. Let's take a closer look at these boots and let's get these things looking better. Okay guys, so I'm reading part of this gentleman's email that he sent to me. And what he said is different about these boots is, let's see, he said the noticeable differences between this pair and other Iron Rangers are that these have brass eyelets and hooks, not nickel. Okay, so we obviously see that these are a brass color. They faded a bit over the years, but we're gonna try to get that back. He said the toe cap is a full wing tip and it goes a little bit down the side wall of the upper. So as you all know, normal Iron Rangers, uh, it's more of a cap toe, uh, not a wing tip. So that's definitely different. He said the heel was lightened and is a barb pattern instead of a full layer. Not really sure what he means by that, but as you can see here on Iron Rangers, uh, it does not have this same pattern that, that is on this pair so that's a little different as well and the last thing he said the tongue tag is fake and they used it as a decoy so clearly as we can see here the tongue tag on these boots is style number 2948 and when you pull that number up it pulls up normal iron rangers it does not pull up uh these wing tips so it is a very cool pair and like we said earlier we're going to try to get these back to the original shape that they were in when these were first sent to this gentleman that sent them in. So let's get to stripping off a lot of this, uh, this old black wax that he put on there and see if we can get that brown color to come back out. All right guys, let's see if we can get these things off without messing up the leather. Yep, more hanging on.
Okay guys, so I have been working on this pair of boots for a little while. As you can see, they used to be a brown color. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that was the original color of the boots. And we're gonna to try to get these boots back to that color. He told me in his email that he had used a lot of black polish to put all over these boots and that's why they look like this now. And uh, we wanna get these back to original. So. I'm gonna keep working on this, keep stripping away. It's gonna be a long process, but um, anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. So when I first started out, I was using a product uh, that I use, well, I'll just show you. I was using Rena Matte by Saphir, and that's what I use on a lot of shoes, you know, dress shoes and whatnot, when I'm just trying to strip off a few layers of wax. But these, are gonna need something much stronger because this <laughs> there's so many coats of this black on there. So I'm just taking acetone. Yeah, I know some people freak out. I'm taking acetone and just rubbing it on it and then wiping it down and that takes off a lot of this black. And then we'll go back behind it and condition it and put the brown back into it and the leather will be fine. As you can see, uh, these don't have a leather midsole or a midsole at all. It's just a rubber sole on the welt. Um, normally, you'll have a rubber midsole. We like to put leather, but occasionally you will see them like this. So, um, and they do come apart kind of quite easily over time, but those stitches are, if, if they're doing their job, then it's gonna hold it on. And we're actually gonna wind up putting it back like this, just the original way. All right, so uh, we've got the bottoms off, we've checked the gimming, and the welt is in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't see any cracks in it, and so um, since it's only been resold, well, put one sole on, the original sole, um, there's plenty of welt left, so we're not gonna replace the welt, and uh, continue on from there. These threads, when I pop them out, are white, but you would not know it from looking down on it, these things are completely black. And there's so much crud that's been caked over these. Okay guys, so I have stripped these boots down. As you can see, I got most of the black off there. He had really loaded these up, he said, with black polish. 
I removed as much of that as possible. Now you're gonna see some black streaks in here and really that's just kind of patina. He's had these boots for about 14, 15 years and he says he wears them all the time to work. So that's just kind of the, some of the darkening of the leather. But we're gonna get the color put back in here and as far as the eyelets go, uh, we want to keep the eyelets looking original. I don't know if you can see it, but the eyelets have Red Wing written on there. And I don't want to replace those because I just like the original look of those Red Wing eyelets. So I'm just going to get these cleaned up and darken the boots up with some brown. And uh, we should be looking good on the upper. color clean these up it's like shiny penny all over again all right so these are a rubber cork um, composite sole and it's kind of that traditional red wing style sole we got to clean up any oil residue that is in the molding process because what they do is they inject these into basically a mold and they got to get them to kind of unstick so think of it kind of like a cooking spray and there's always some type of residue and you want to get all that off acetone is the best thing to strip it let that clean and then we will rough them up now remember we are not going to put a midsole on top of this so i, I definitely want to get the, as much of that residue off and put enough glue on it that it's going to bond When we do this, it is just kind of, um, it feels almost like a light layer of hair. And we're just trying to rough it up just enough to give the glue something to bond to. All right, 
So I am marking the heel and the toe on the original. I don't have to trace the whole thing on the rubber. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the boot has a natural curve on what the original last was made off of. If you don't have the original last and you go to stick this and you stick it too short, then it'll actually flatten this out and it's, it throws off the heel height. So if you can stick the, uh, the toe and stick the heel, then it'll keep the original shape of the shoe. Uh, without the last so that's why we do that it makes the hill fit easier And see it'll really create that follow the arch so when I put it on the press it'll uh, it'll do it even more Okay guys, so while we're waiting for the glue to dry on these before we put on the heels, it's a good time for us to tell you about today's video sponsor, Audible. Okay guys, so you know that Heath and I have talked about Audible in the past, and one of the reasons that we're big fans of Audible is because we're on our feet a lot. Not only are we working on shoes, but we're also having to help out make sandals, and sometimes it's just nice to pop in the earbuds and listen to an audio book. Okay, now the audio book that I am currently reading is called D-Day Through German Eyes. I'm not sure if you can see that. As you guys know, I'm a big history fan, especially from World War II. I used to live in Germany, so this has been a great audiobook. I love listening to it, not only when I'm at work, but also on the way home. Now, one of the really cool things, guys, about Audible's Plus catalog is that you're able to select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, everything from fitness and meditation programs to getting better sleep at night. They have audiobooks for that as well. Another cool thing is that with every month, Audible members get one free audiobook and full access to the Plus catalog. Okay guys, Audible has been nice enough to give each of you guys a 30-day free trial. So after this video, make sure you click on the link below. It's audible.com slash Trenton Heath, or you can text Trenton Heath to 500-500. Again, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Okay guys, so we're about to stick the heels onto the boots, but I want to show you something really cool. While we're sitting here in our shop, I heard a knock on the door and I went and opened it and when I did, there was a, a lady that down below our shop is an old antique store and some random ladies was down there shopping and came back and gave us these two books uh, called Shoe Repairing on both of them. They're both written by the same guy, Henry Karg, and they're dated from the 1940s. Um, 
but it's so cool. It, uh, we're going through them and I mean, they talk about everything you could really want to know about repairing shoes. So I want to read over these and if you guys are ever looking for books on how to repair shoes, then definitely check these out. Again, Repairing Shoes by Henry Carr, K-A-R-G. But again, really sweet people out there. We really appreciate her doing that. It was very thoughtful. So anyways, let's get these hills stuck. These are some uh, heavy duty, these are like 12 8 inch uh, nails, so these will go all the way through the heel, the one piece heel, and all the way through it and clinch into the, uh, the insole. A lot of people ask what type of nails we like to use. Um, a lot of ours come from DB Gurney, and pretty cool place, it's still like a family owned business uh, made here in uh, the United States, I think they're up in Massachusetts, but uh, they have all kinds of brass tacks in fact we use a lot of the, uh, the brass tacks on our sandals um upholstery nails canoe making nails i mean they're just they, all kinds of check out db gurney if you're into um building things So the press, I have a press that will actually kind of mushroom these things out. However, sometimes with brass, you'll get these little burrs on there and it could grab your sock. So I normally just go through and just tap it down to make it all smooth. All right, last thing we're doing guys is just putting some of this oiled leather cream on here. Put some of the oils back into that leather. And then we are all done. Okay, ladies and gents, so that just about does it. But let me give you a quick rundown on what we did today. Okay, so this pair of boots, again, was just a, a test pair. Uh, the gentleman that owned these said he's been wearing them to work for about 15 years, so they are completely broken in and the leather has darkened or patinaed a lot over the years. So I tried to strip off the old black wax that he had been putting onto the boots. Um, I got as much of that off as I possibly could. And then I just conditioned these boots and you know, put a little bit more brown uh, uh, coloring back into them. And now they match a lot closer to what the original color looked like. Also, we removed the old soles. We put the Vibram replicas back on there that look very much like the Red Wings and removed the old speed hooks and put in new brass colored ones to match the original color that was on there. Um, what else, what else? I think that was about it. This was a very, very simple resole. There wasn't a lot to it. I think what made this video different from most of our others is just 
it's not very often that you get a pair of test boots in here, um, you know, that was never put into production. And what I want to know from you guys is leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this. You know, Aaron was like them, but he, he was a big fan of just the original Iron Ranger that has a cap toe, the original look. And obviously, that's the comment that uh, Red Wing got back from folks because they never put this pair of boots into production. So again, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this pair of boots. Would you have worn them? What would you have told Red Wing? Also, if you have any questions about products that we use or anything like that, check out our description box down below. Um, we have most of the information regarding our businesses, our Instagram account, everything down below. Definitely check it out. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. Until next time, y'all have a good one.